Well, the president of the Syrian American Medical Society, Ahmed Taraji, is here with me. Very good evening to you, Mr. Taraji. What are we to make of this latest outrage? What's the latest information you have? So over the last 48 hours, seven hospitals were bombed out of service. Five of them are the Syrian American Medical Society hospitals. Also, I've been communicating with my colleagues at White Helmets and most of their evacuation ambulances and cars were hit as well. They're running on one or two ambulances right now. Unfortunately, very shocking and very surprising, even the food conv uh, convoy food that was emptied in storage in Ghouta, that storage was also hit, the convoy that was let in like a few days ago. Obviously, this is starvation attacks to destroy the infrastructure of the civil societies and obviously nobody is able to do anything or nobody is... You have no doubt at all that this is targeting, it's not so-called collateral damage, no, it's no, deliberately absolutely. attacking the, that infrastructure. Absolutely, this storage was hit many times before, those hospitals were hit many times before, we shared with the international community before that those are hospitals, they were visited by the WHO and UN Damascus in the past for inspections. They are absolutely known that there are hospitals still they're getting hit over and over and over without any accountability. And this is meant to be a de-escalation zone. Unfortunately, yes. Unfortunately, we, we are witnessing right now the failure of the Trump administration comparable to what President Obama failed also in Syria. We've seen repetitive chemical attacks taking place in Syria, like in Khan Sheikhoun. We are seeing right now displacement of Ghouta, while the US administration is just watching that and they're not taking any action on it to avoid it, just like Aleppo last year. Is it too late now for the, for the West, in particular the United States, to get involved? I, th I don't think it's too late. If there is an intention and will to stop the displacement of the people, which is the goal of this escalation right now, the United States, UK and the EU can do that. They should be able to stop and de-escalate this area. I do not think there's an interest of de-escalating those but areas. But that might work very well take military action against the Assad regime and his supporters? I don't think that's the situation. I think the situation in Ghouta can be de-escalated with agreements. I don't think it has to be a military operation. Unfortunately, what's going on right now, the Syrian forces, the Syrian government forces, will continue all their attacks to displace people from their towns over and over and over, and we'll continue to see that unless serious action is taken. I want to take you back to what happened at the UN Security Council with the chemical weapon investigation mechanism was vetoed out by Russia. And up to this point, there's no serious effort to re-establish that. And the international community is just failing in Syria. And is that why you think there has been this, this escalation, this emboldening of the Assad regime's attacks? Because they assess that the West has turned its back. Absolutely. And I think that's the situation right now. They can do anything they want without accountability, without anybody willing to stop them. They sounds like they have an open car to do whatever they want to do in Syria right now, and nobody will do anything. And unfortunately, the UN is failing miserably right now with that humanitarian crisis. And if they're not able to provide a food truck from Damascus to Ghouta, which is less than 10 miles of distance, I'm not sure what else they can do. Do you fear it's going to get a lot worse? I mean, we're talking about horror upon horror at the moment, but of course, we've been reporting on that for six, seven years, and uh, things always seem to then ratchet up more. I think it's going to follow, I'm, I'm hopeful it will not, but I'm thinking it's going to follow the same pattern of displacing like tens of thousands of people out of Ghouta. They're going to be moved to Idlib, which is right now witnessing more than 300,000 people who are internally displaced without resources, with no shelter and no water. Now we're going to be adding hundreds, I mean, tens of thousands of people on them and I'm not sure who is responsible about this and what solution we're looking for. I think an action, well, if it's meant point. to be, mm -hmm. should be de-escalation and grounding the Air Force in Syria. Well, that's the point, is what solution is being looked for. Is it your assessment that the United States and its supporters, including the, the UK, have decided that uh, Assad in certain areas is about to win and there's nothing they can do about it? I disagree with that assessment. I think if they want to do something, they can do it. But I don't think there's a will of doing anything. Well, let me rephrase that then. Exactly. There's nothing, nothing they want to do about it. And the danger is then, given the complications all over Syria, that something even bigger could break out here, given the forces involved, including the Iranians, the Turks, the Kurds, the Israelis. I completely agree. It's just, you know, we're coming back as civil society. We've been calling for de-escalation, grounding the Air Force. We've seen the destruction happening by the barrel bombs thrown by the 
uh, satellite helicopters, the very first step is to de-escalate Syria, ground the Air Force, and that would be a good transition into negotiations and political solution for the situation in Syria. At this time, it seems to be everybody's willing or trying to fight or take territory inside Syria. Well, it's so interesting uh, talking to you about uh, such terrible circumstances. Mr. Tarakji, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Uh,